So, I always wanted to start my TEDx talk with a joke, so I'm going to go with Philip here and I'm going to start something. I'm going to start with a joke. And uh, so, first of all, I'm, you know, I, the problem with the, with the wheelchair is you can't really do stand-up comedy. <laughs> The joke was that that was not the joke. The joke is I'm really happy my microphone works because nobody's going to grab my ass. But if anybody wants to, it's Valentine's Day, so I should let you. <laughs> All right, let's go to the talk. Um, so let's start the harsh way. Uh, when I was 13 years old, uh, I woke up one morning and couldn't feel or move my legs. Uh, my dad was on a business trip at the time, so my mom called my granddad. He rushed to our house and he carried me down two flights of stairs and into the hospital. It was the beginning of 50 or so hospital days. Um, it was scary, it was horrible, and it was the beginning of a great story. So if ten and a half years after my spinal stroke somebody writes an article about me, uh, it is likely those will be the facts he or she will use. Guy Akic is 24 years old. He is a member of the Slovene National Adaptive Ski Team. He is a two-time Paralympian. He is an extreme adaptive athlete who passes 500 kilometers in nine hours, in nine days with my medak in a double kayak. He also um, used his sit ski to ski from the world's second largest ski jumping hill at Planica, reaching the speed of 118 kilometers per hour. Oh. He is also the first student with disability at the Janus Faculty of Sports and he is married to a beautiful girl. Um, that's, now, if anybody would tell me, go buy this book, this guy did all this, I would say bullshit, he's just telling you stories. So, this story is real, it seems real, and you know, it looks real, but something in this story is missing, so what didn't I tell you? So, what's missing is the fact that no real person in this world goes just up. You know, if you look at Google, if you look at Apple, if you look at Nike, if you look at the way they are, they are up. But they haven't gone from zero to hero, they haven't skyrocketed overnight. They had their lows, they had their bad days, they had their shitty days, and they wanted to close shop at least three times in the meantime. So, you know, what did, I didn't tell you is that in the course of all this, those couple of things happened as well. So first, I broke off a two and a half year relationship with my, at the time, fiance. I spent six months in depression, wanting to stare at the wall. I, I changed a coach, or two, or five, <laughs> who keeps count, right? And then I switched to Sitsky twice and couldn't make a turn without falling. Uh, I had a brilliant idea for a, an adaptive ski movie that nobody wanted to film or finance. And I was too afraid to become an extreme adaptive athlete. So, the people like to be bold, you know? And people want to be bold and people want to be successful and they want to rule the world and everything. But the problem is most of us, we are bold in front of the computer screen. So a couple of years ago, I was playing around uh, with Google Maps, you know, perfect, great thing to play around with. And I was looking at these distances from point A to point B, and I, you know, coincidentally came upon this map. And as I was looking at this map, so, you know, how to cross Slovenia diagonally, I came upon an idea, and I said, what if I did it with a bike? 
And then I printed out this, this map, and I put it on my wall and hung there for two years before I realized the main problem. And the main problem was I spent the last two years looking at the map and not doing anything about actually doing this. So in 2013, like I usually do without any training or you know, really thinking about it, I promised Team Jakic, and along with several friends, we'll do this 360 kilometer bike ride in 24 hours and raise money for the Ljubljana's Institute of Oncology. Don't just say bold things, do bold things. So, another thing I realized is, you know, people like to be bold, but a lot of times people like to also find an excuse just in case they fail. So, the excuse I hear most is this one. What about the money? I can't make money that way. How am I going to support myself? How am I going to pull this project through? So, you know, the mo money is not the most important thing in the world. It's doing something you love doing is the most important thing in the world. So, when I was living in Colorado, um, I met this guy, Scott Olson. <laughs> and uh, he's actually a nice guy. Uh, so Scott Olson, in order to work with a group of adaptive alpine skiers at the National Sports Center for the Disabled in Colorado, he quit his job, he moved from Minnesota to Colorado, he sold his house, he sold his bike, and he sold his boat. He got up at 4 a.m. and he went to bed at 8 p.m., totally wasted, or tired, or both. <laughs> anyway, um, so what he did was in between those hours, he did his job online, he also did his ski coaching job, and then he spent five hours with the athletes in the gym. He went to bed and he woke up the next morning and did it over again. It was incredibly hard, and, but it paid off. So today, Scott Olson is the coach of Adam Hall, 2010 Winter Paralympic Slalom Champion and the head coach of the New Zealand National Adaptive Ski Team. And one of the things I learned from Scott is work hard, the money will follow. You see, people think that being an athlete means being perfect. Being an athlete doesn't mean being perfect. We go up as much as we go down. We do more steps backwards than we do forward, um, you know, all those things. And what I want you to do today, I want you to go home, and I want you to take the biggest piece of paper in the house you can find, and just write something you want to do in life in bold letters, bold words, and hang it on a wall, and get up every morning and work on it, work on achieving that goal. So, being an athlete means, means being human means our lives go up and down just as much as yours do. And um, I'm going to leave you here you know, with one question. If this cripple made his dream happen, why couldn't you? <laughs> Thank you.